Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 8 of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, part of the Reignited Trilogy for the Xbox. Today we will be doing Breeze Harbor. One of uh, two levels we'll probably do in this episode. We'll probably do Scorch and yeah. Worms. See, now we're helping the birds instead of the worms. Funny how that works, right? You and your little bucket of soap. Get lost, buddy. Same with you. And then once you kill all the enemies, it'll allow you to activate the flame. You can activate it before, but kind of like ha what happened to him, they'll actually put it out too. So, we'll talk to you. Please excuse the mess, Spyro. We are currently suffering from a land blubber infestation. First, they put out the fires in our boilers, and now they've shut down our ship, too! If you could stoke up the fires under the boilers, I'm sure you could make your way to the ship. The steam from the boilers will activate our highly advanced machinery. Why do you have machinery? Also, why is this machinery a whirlwind when you're birds? You're clearly a pelican. You don't need an updraft to fly, dude. It's like they specifically made the technology for Spiral, which is kind of funny if you think about it. Oh yes, these firefighter guys. A lot of enemies in this game are kind of like really, really weak and they don't really do much. Like, what are these enemies exactly supposed to do to us? Like, also, how does water even hurt Spyro? Like, how come we could get impaled on spikes or touch lava and only take one hit, but water also does one hit? Like, is it super hot water or super cold water? Something like that? I don't even know. Then I guess we'll continue on to deal with more stuff. So we can activate this boiler now. And this raises the water. See what I mean? Oddly specific for a bunch of birds that can already swim and fly. So I don't know what they would need. One of the orbs is actually to deal with these guys. The... I think there's some kind of mine. I think that's what the game calls them. I think we can hit this one from here. Yeah, we can. I don't remember if there's a second one that pops up there though. There is. So we'll raise it up a little more. I hope that hits it. Or maybe we're too far to the left. Yeah, we we're too far to the left. And then we also gotta hit this one. And then I believe there's another one on the other side. Yeah, there was. Nice. And we got that. So now we can glide over here. Technically, I guess hover. You're not really gliding, you're hovering. And collect a bunch of the gems and move on. Because that's what this level is. It's at least it's technically bigger, I guess, than Zephyr in a way. Zephyr is weird because, like, it feels like it's a long level despite actually being pretty short in terms of, like, like which direction you have to go in. And here's where we get that orb. We're not going to talk to him because I already explained exactly what we have to do. And now we have to destroy this over here. Wait, did I destroy all of them in here? I did too, didn't I? Huh, I guess I did. I think I can activate this boiler, and we got a life from that uh, clam over there. So then we can activate this thing, which creates these boats that fly over here. And weird thing is, why would they need this? Once again, oddly specific to allowing Spyro to get by. Unless it's for, like, visitors that don't fly like them. Sounds to me like they were inviting in these Abariza Builders, or Breeze Builders, Land Blubbers. I just like seeing Breeze Builder funny for whatever reason. There we go, and the last two should be over here. Fire in the hole. And that's it. Thanks, Spyro. Here's that orb I promised. Sorry if it still has clam juice on it. Eh, I don't think Spyro cares too much about it having clam juice, but thank you. Yeah, there's only two orbs here, and we're already done one, so that's pretty good. Oh man, we have to wait for the boat. Worst part about this level is patiently waiting. Ugh. 
I had to have a drink while we did this. Now, the other orb is actually up there, as you can probably have guessed. Also, how does that fan actually move these? Like, they're not actually in contact with the fan, so I, I don't get it. Also, let's... Ah, sucks to be you. Now, to trigger this once again, you have to use the... Uh, the world or the whirlwind, the um, what you call them? The not turbines, the boilers. And to do that, you need to come over here and defeat these couple enemies. Also, they give you a lot of lives in this level for whatever silly reason. Then you can activate this, which will then allow you to jump on this. And for some reason, it locks you in place. In the original, it didn't, which I thought was way more fun. Also, it automatically makes you glide, which was not a feature in the original either. Alright, these land blubbers. Wait, why is there only one big land blubber there and none on the other corners? There we go, and to raise up the boat, you need to actually flame these to activate the boilers on the ship, and then the ship will raise. Right. Now, we need to go over here to go and collect these gems, and we might as well get the talisman, which is a stupid anchor. Thanks for getting our ship fired up, Spyro. Now we can proceed with our counterattack on Zephyr. Please take this talisman as a token of our gratitude. Man, you guys are very American sounding for being pelicans, but sure. The Golden Anchor. That one was always kind of boring, even in the original. Like, it was... it, it wasn't a very good talisman. It was always kind of one of those ones that... I feel like some of the later levels that don't have talismans would have had some really cool talismans, despite not actually getting any. And that's a real shame. Lucky for me that you came along. My machinery is broken, and the gears I need to repair it are scattered all over the tracks. Can you hop on that trolley up there and collect them for me? Yeah, sure. Once again, this challenge also doesn't have any stars like the last level Zephyr did. And for whatever reason, that's a common trend with a lot of the mini games in this. They just seem to not have challenge ratings, which is really weird that... I think it was like that in the original, where some of them did and some of them didn't. So this game stuck way too close to the original and did that. So for these boxes, you hop over them, obviously. For the TNT, you have to shoot them. Uh, and I believe they're random. They might have some kind of pattern to them, to which one they use, but... Uh, right now, it was just a box. I think that time it was a TNT, though. So already we got another box. Man, this level was infamous, infamous, infamous in the Spyro community. Yeah, trouble to trolley. I took that way too sharp. I, I forgot how sensitive this game is compared to the original, where the original was a little less sensitive, which was both good and bad. It made it way more annoying in the original, even though it wasn't hard. Just this one is way more uh, responsive, which is actually pretty good. Makes for some pretty smooth gameplay. Now we'll see if it's TNT. Now it might be like if you went around a second time. It might alternate between the two. So it might not be random. It might be on a fixed pattern. I'm also recording this video a lot later in the day than I normally do. It's like 6.30 right now. I normally record at like 11 in the morning or sometimes even earlier than that. But I needed to uh, get some videos recorded for the weekend because double XP is going on on one of the games that I play, and I wanted to take advantage of that because the new update's also tomorrow. So if I have it all done today, well guess what, then I have all the time in the world to play those games. So that's fun. I guess, if, if you find that fun. I guess it's all up to you if you find it fun or not. You guys might find it really boring. I personally don't care, you guys have your own tastes. Like, not every game I play is something that you guys watch. Like, for example, the Fairly Odd Parents game that I play, a lot of you guys watch it, despite not being that great of a game, you know? And there we go. Easy. That was great work, Spyro. Now I can start fixing my machines. Here, I don't have room in my toolbox for this thing anymore. And there we go. That's the second and final orb of this level. Yeah, Zephyr is really weird, eh? took about double the time, it was almost a 20 minute level, this one's barely a 10 minute level. If that. And uh, yeah, like, I don't know. 
Now, Scorch does have an annoying section, and then the level we'll do next will be Magma Cone after that. Because as much as I wouldn't mind doing uh, Fracture Hills first, because it's my least favorite level in this world, it's definitely one that um, suffers from the whole you can't 100% complete it thing. Wait a minute. Where are the gems pointing? I think that's like towards the end of the level, right? I don't know how I missed two gems. Again, that's two gems in a row in two different levels that I missed. Uh, get on the boat, get on the boat. Okay, yeah, it's over here. Which is actually good, because I always backtrack, because I don't think you get the cutscene if you forcefully leave the level. At least in the, in the uh, PS2 versions you didn't, so... Technically I was going to go back this way anyway, it just took a little longer to go back than I wanted to. Anyways, that's 100% done on this level, so that just leaves a few more levels before we get to take on the boss here. So, let's return home. Gather up our 400 gems, and you know. on both levels they take turns blowing each other up really funny 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 stuff now we do have time to do scorch and if scorch goes by quick we might actually have time to do the speedway which means then we might actually be able to finish the last three levels in one episode in the next episode so that's pretty cool so we've officially got a hundred percent on this first half of the world that's down here now we have the castle section the next uh, world in the game, like a home world, is actually my favorite, despite it not being very long, which is a shame. Anyways, let's go to the desert world of Scorch, where we'll meet some interesting characters that come back in Spyro 3, in a most random level too. Kinda like this one. Oh man, that dumb kid went for the candy. Hello, Spyro. My brother Handel and I have been sent here to blow at this castle, but Handel got caught by these evil soldiers and I'm stuck out here. Wait, how come she said the R in that word down there in soldiers, but it still pronounced it like soldiers? If you can open the doors that blocked the way, I can find Handel and we can complete our super secret spy mission. Yeah, like, why is it that the R's in, in that one word were... Aw, oh, man. Wasn't technically, uh... Capitalized. Or, uh, turned into an R. Also, the skill point here, you need to hit every tree until a coconut falls out. Or, I guess, so a coconut falls out, because it's guaranteed to fall out every time you hit it. I'm pretty sure these guys had guns in the original, but they have slingshots in this. Actually, they might have had slingshots in the original, too, but I was pretty sure they were rifles. Also, you can't go up on the sand, you slide down. It's a cool way of putting in an in-game wall. I really like when Sparrow does that. Their in-game walls are pretty darn cool and creative. Definitely as opposed to other ones where it just like, seems like you go there and they just put a wall. Anyways, you have to raise three flags to get to the level, which are actually one of the two orbs here too. Yeah, and it's not a very fun mission. I'm not saying it's hard, I never really had too much of an issue as a kid beating them. But they still aren't super fun. And also, where was he aiming? You guys seem to be more of a threat than the guys with the guns are lately, that's for sure. Oh man, we have one of these things. Also, why is Zoe up here? He seems like a weird spot to put Zoe, but okay. You can also headbutt them, but they'll knock you back. There's a few enemies like that in this game, that, or in any Spar game, that'll knock you back when you headbutt them. So that's cool. Also, I don't think you have to hit every single one of these trees, but I hit them anyway because technically they are trees. And just to make sure I get the uh, skill point, I always do this. It's not all of them have monkeys in them either, so that's a thing. There, now let's go talk to Hunter, which is one of the uh, other two orbs. The monkeys have escaped from the Avalar Zoo, and I've been sent here to catch them. But they keep throwing coconuts at me, and it hurts! Can you help me out? 
Yeah, sure, Hunter. Great. Just charge the tree before I get hit. I'll be able to catch the monkeys as they fall. Follow me. Yeah, monkeys in a barrel. Difficulty two. Honestly, there's difficulty three and four challenges in this game that are way more difficult than this one, <laughs> or way more easy than this one. See, like we got hit. You can actually die in this mini game, which is something you can't say for most mini games. Also, kind of unfair that that guy was attacking despite not being uh, in range. Also, it's kind of one of the slow-paced ones, despite not being a very difficult mini game, still requires your patience. Because he walks all the way over here, despite the other three literally being at the beginning. I guess he wanted to get the furthest ones done first, right? Which one are we going to next, Hunter? This one over here with this monkey? Also, they mainly throw coconuts at you, but they will throw them at Hunter if you're not close enough. So technically, if you go first and get them to throw, then you're pretty much safe. This one, oh, the last monkey's here. Yeah, just be careful not to line up with Hunter to accidentally get him hit. Thanks for your help, Spyro. Please take this. One of the monkeys had it. Sweet. Our very first orb of the level. Not bad. And what I mean about like the the kids being in this level and also being in Spyro Three being a being odd levels. And then I said kind of similar to this one. I don't mean the level's anything like this one. I mean they're just really far out there and don't have like a tie-in with any of the other levels. And the one in... Okay, so no levels have a tie-in together in Spyro 3. I've seen that coming. But let's be real. The level that they're in is just super weird. The, the challenges in there, like the minigames you have to do, are really, really unique and kind of creative. But they're just so out there that it doesn't really feel like they belong in that type of level. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Also, they have a really weird, um, like, problem with accuracy. Like, holy cow. So, we'll raise this flag up, and that's the final flag. So, remember where these flags are, because you'll need to remember them. Now, let's go down here and kick these guards' butts. Oh, I seen that comment. Oh, he got me at the tail end of my uh, invincibility frames. That was rough. Sorry, man. Ah, I was alive, so we got full health. That's that's just too good. Now I don't think we're missing any trees down here. So we'll go down this little staircase over here to collect all these gems and go up to a place I like to call the Magic of Scorch. Because guess what happens in here? Look at all this money. This is like one of the biggest treasure troves in this entire game. Unlike Spiral 1, this level doesn't, or this game doesn't have a level at the very end where it's just all gems. It's more like a just fun mini game themed level. Which I think is pretty cool, but still. Also, that's the end of the level, which is kind of neat. Now we'll glide over here, which is technically the end of the level. Yeah, this level, like I said, is actually pretty short. The one orb takes a while to get, because it's a pain in the butt. But everything else is just really, really, actually not too long. It's also a pretty decent level. I like the aesthetic to it. The whole Middle East Arabian vibe is pretty darn cool. Kind of reminds me of Crash 3 that we've also been currently Let's Playing. The most current episode I've recorded of that, though, is currently the, um... The first of the... I think I have... Uh, what is it? Nine of the first... Nine of the 25 relics done? Or the 25 basic levels relics done? So, so in the next level we'll probably get the uh, yellow gem. Which then means we'll have all the color gems in that game, I think. Something like that, I think. Hey Spyro, we need those flags to prove our secret mission was successful. But the flag keeper keeps stealing them. If you can knock the flag keeper down, you could bring the flags back. My secret decoder ring says that this power-up thing should help you. Mm-hmm. Well, instead of soda pop, that sucks. And yeah, this one is a five-star. And it's very fitting. So I'm going to grab the talisman, and then use the super fire power-up to go get the last of the gems, and that's it. Spyro, you make a great secret agent. Now Handel and I can complete our mission. By the way, you can have this talisman. I stole it when the soldiers weren't looking. Wait, so is this talisman even useful to us since they stole it? It's a golden scarab. Yeah, they made a lot of them too golden. Like, yeah, in the original, it was golden. 
but it wasn't golden to that point. Also, we're missing a tree. I don't know where I missed a tree to, but we have to go and find that as well. Because I know for a fact we got that one. So... Oh, it might be that one up here. I don't think I hit this one next to the gem. At least I don't think so. So anyways, let's grab this. So we get out of the way. You're creating a... You have, you're a solid hitbox. Yeah, and there's the skill point. And there's all the gems. Nice. So we got the skill point, and we got the gems. So that's good. All that's left is one singular orb, and then we can call it an episode. Once again, not going to be an overly long episode. Have any of this series went over 30 minutes yet? I don't think they have. Which is good, because let's be real, these uh, videos take a lot of storage to record. Each one is about 5 gigabytes before I edit it. Which then usually makes them more, because the uh, quality goes up a bit. So, that's the thing. So we have to aim up, what you have to do is aim up and hit these guys. Bombo. So you want that and yeah, he's just gonna, we already know what he's gonna do, he's gonna attack us. Honestly, the third one, you can kind of rush the most. Once you get to this point though, on each of the waves, it's always the hardest, because you're always closer to him, which means that his hits are more likely to actually make contact with you. Like that. I totally did that on purpose, guys. You guys definitely didn't see anything, right? Also, I don't know why they need the flags. Like, I really feel like we're, like, enroaching on other people's territory, and we're just doing something. I really want to know what their secret mission was. Also, are you serious? Why did it bounce off the wall like that? I don't remember them, like having like really wide hitboxes that cause them to bounce without actually making complete contact. Like how did that not that one not hit me but that other one keep hitting me? Why does the other one keep hitting me? Jeez that came out really weird. And then if you kind of bum rush this part you can kind of cheese it. And then handles say the same thing every time they need to go and get more. So we don't need to listen to this kid. He's just a kid after all. Let's go, go, go. Why were you in the ground, Mr. Snake? So, let's go over this way. Yeah, and the third one you actually have to be very, very, very fast with, because you don't... Because you're almost out of breath at this point in time, let alone at the beginning of the level. So, then we hit him again, and we gotta do it a second time. Still after me flags, you lucky charms dragon. What the heck did I do? Oh, my eyeballs are so sore right now that the uh, it's just hard to record something moving so fast with like blur and stuff on my screen. So for these parts, you can kind of cheese them and just go up here. You can't hit you. Like I said, it's not until you get to this point where the level actually gets pretty difficult. Also, I don't remember him throwing infinitely that quickly. I, I swear to God, I don't remember it being like this, guys. Alright, so now he's back up there, and we still have one left. I don't know why he just gives up. Also, I don't get why it's so pixelated and blurry when he gets to that point. Like, what, it's the zoomed out view of him there? It's actually pretty blurry. And no, that's not the video recorder. On my TV, it's even in even better quality than I am recording at, because my laptop can't handle, like, super, super strong gameplay. Like, I, I can record 4K, but there's no way my computer would handle, like, recording a video in 4K. Not currently. Alright, so now we have to hit him up there. Hopefully we don't miss him. Good. Now this is the final flag. Yeah, yeah, yeet. Beep beep, buddy. Adios, amigo. I love this part, because, like, you can cheese this. I think you can cheese this part. So, really, he's only a threat at the very end. Also, we got another life. I swear they increased the chances of getting lives from fodder in this game. It seems really, really, really easy to get lives now. I thought that was gonna hit me just to be like a troll. To be like, nah, you wanted to finish this? How about no? 
All right, now we can kind of just beat it and win. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Easy. Great job, Agent Spyro. How can we repay you for your efforts? How about this orb that I found in the sand? Hmm. Sweet. Our second and final orb for this level. Nice. And that should be 100%. Oh, well, after we go through the all orbs collected phase, there we go, 100%, and now we can leave. Nice, another level bites the dust. And then they randomly become superheroes because logic. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and the Patreons in the link below, and I will see you guys all next time for another exciting video of some kind. And all these different games that you guys love to see. You'll get to see one of them. Bye-bye.